I just oh. did two. Oh, you did the oh the, yep, the there's another one. Did two? Hollywood style uh clapper yeah. board. So now you need yeah. to figure it out. In uh, that, celebration of Oscar night. Uh the uh you can't say the Oscars. That's trademark. Oh, uh, it's it's damn. the big uh Hollywood the big awards. It's the Hollywood Awards tonight. <laughs> That's right. I hope Super Panther wins. Super Panther? Super Panther! <laughs> Mysterious right. man with claws that slice and cut and scratch. Will he defeat Gollum, the robot man? Let's hope. He's the Avengers' only hope. Okay. He's a, he's a superstar. Uh-huh. It was my it was my directorial debut. I don't know if you <laughs> that film made a lot of money this year. Hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. it's very popular. That's that's what I said. That's it. I don't think I've seen any of the other nominees. <laughs> okay. Is that is that that's something is that, you and I have in common? Is that sexy fish movie nominated? I saw that, that was one last year. Fish I, sex. Was last did it year. did it win? I don't remember. Did it? Sexy Fish. <laughs> Sexy my, Fish, the musical. My directorial debut. Yeah. Starring Bruce Campbell <laughs> as the Fishman. The Fishman. <laughs> the Fishman who sold the Sexy Fish to the blind lady. I think when is it going to remake uh, Incredible Mr. Limpet? St- well, starring when? who? When? Who? Who? Okay, here's a serious question. Uh-huh. <laughs> Warner Brothers, uh huh, who produced the original, uh, yeah. The Incredible Mr. You know, every week I feel kind yeah. of bad that I make you yeah. guys wait and I make us a little bit late, but then well, I this get is on your punishment. Here. Well, then I get punishment. on here and realize I'll tell you who I'll I'm tell you who could be defender. who it could be. Uh, who would Steve play Buscemi. Steve Buscemi? <laughs> oh, geez, hello, fellow that kid. would actually work. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually Steve work. <laughs> Holy crap, that'd be really funny. Yeah, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Lippet. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Jeez, I was Come joking, but now I kind of want to see it. <laughs> that would be great. I know, right? Yeah. Oh. I wish I had a Steve Buscemi impression so I could say, <laughs> "I'm a fish." <laughs> but I or in, in, in here, here, here uh, what about Rob Schneider? Mm. <laughs> We're gonna put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's maybe oh, try and bring it back <laughs> to more of a Buscemi. A Buscemi. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Be good. Goldblum would would make yeah, a, a you could do that. Trip, but it would be a very different movie. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. But. Hello and welcome to episode 642 of the Player One Podcast for Tuesday, February 26th, 2019. I'm your host, Chris Johnston. With me as always from Canada, Mr. Greg Seward. Hola. How's it going? Uh, Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. And joining me from the great state of Washington, Mr. Phil Theobald. Uh, how's it going? It's it, going it's, well. It's, it's fine. It's yeah. going fine. Yeah, I it, can't... Uh, I can't. I can't. I feel complain. like you answered. How's it going? You before. asked and answered yourself. Yeah. Did I don't think you didn't give anyone a chance to answer and and reciprocate. You just sort of answered it. <laughs> you said, Ooh. "How's it going? Fine. It's going fine." I'm... Yeah. Yeah. That was weird. That was weird, so, Phil. So how, how how are you guys doing? Doing good. good. I'm doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Greg, how how's 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 business up in Canada? I'll tell Great. you what, awesome. so I, was, I was listening to um, the latest episode of uh, Ice Cream Social. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Paul Mattingly, I ended up watching uh, Abducted in Plain Sight this week. Oh, no. Even though Paul basically gave a blow by blow recount of the entire thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched it anyway, and yeah. I was not prepared. Yeah. Okay. That is was bizarre go watch it go watch no, it thanks. if you want to lose all remaining faith you have in humanity <laughs> i'd like to keep wow. a shred i want to keep wow. the shred that i have then please then follow that up with the the fire festival uh the, you know what oh that fire festival ain't got nothing on this well but you gotta obviously. you got did you watch both Firefest docs 
No, because I, 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 we don't have Hulu up here. Oh, damn. You guys don't okay. have Hulu. No. That's a shame. Because it's, re- it's really good. At least not last I checked. <laughs> okay. Huh. Which Phil, I'm you kind of hoping that both? it gets pushed to something else. But... I, I, I've watched neither. Neither? Oh, okay. You should you watch should... them. You should. I, well, I should. Well, you know what? I was busy uh, catching up on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, which well, by the way, boy, which I know I only bring up because I know CJ started watching that as yes. well. Yeah, yeah, so I'm in season three now. Yeah, and that show is fantastic. Can I all can around? I, can I warn you about something? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to warn you about something eventually because this is what happened to, to us. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Eventually, no. Eventually, no. It, it's it stays quality throughout. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, you're going to hit a point where you're going to catch up. And yeah. you'll watch a new episode, and you won't be able to say, "Oh, let's just watch one more." I know because you will be caught up, and that's really it's heartbreaking. That happened to us uh, this week. Oh, we sucks. saw the the oh, new that's episode. My, that's my future. Yeah, <laughs> so. but they're on what season six now? Uh, yes, I yeah, believe. and I'm I'm yes. only starting season three at this point. So. Okay, well, you know, yeah, you'll get there. I'll g- uh, give me another three weeks. Who's who's <laughs> who's there? Who's your favorite character on the show? Uh, Boyle, because he's the most like you. Because he's the most like me. <laughs> no, that makes, no. that makes perfect sense. No, makes no, I, I like sense. Boyle and Diaz. Okay, yeah. I mean, you're wrong. The best character is Holt, but well, I mean, that's but, he is he is yeah, I'm right up there too. But that's okay. They're all they're all. <laughs> there's no there's no wrong choice. Like a favorite, but yeah. And no so, so as you know, I started watching Brooklyn Nine Nine when it first. Uh, premiered and watched like the first two episodes and was not really a fan. Couldn't get right. into it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we were talking a, f- a few uh, weeks ago, I think on the after show, maybe even yeah. and about the TV we were watching. And um, uh, I uh, decided to push through mm-hmm. and watch some more episodes. Yeah. And it got good probably about episode four or five. Well, you liked Parks and Rec, right? I love Parks and Rec. And I love the good could, place. And if you could make it through season one of Parks and Rec, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, which season is, one of Parks and Rec is really rough. I mean, it's it's not really rough. It is just bad. Season one of Parks yeah. and Rec is yeah. kind of garbage. Even the U.S. Office is kind of bad in season one. It's not a great season one. Season no, two is not. where that picks up. Yes. Yes. And then where it was around season five, where it starts its a uh, downward descent uh, spiral. Yeah. yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. Uh, so. Anyway, enough of the TV talk. TV, TV, TV. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about <laughs> what? <laughs> let's talk about. Let's talk news. about the Hollywood Awards. No, no, the the, the big news. Oh, from last week. What's that? Uh, Reggie Fisame retiring from Nintendo. Oh my gosh. Hey, <laughs> hold on. I have notes. I oh have, gosh! I have all sorts of material. Hey, CJ, uh-huh. what, what's the fella's name who replaced him? What's the fella's name who replaced him? Doug Bowser. All right. So, have you heard? <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I, I I I did not have any Bowser jokes. For Come on, it is that funny. Was, it is was, funny that, that the guy's Greg name is was, Bowser. That that was Greg who was cracking up in our Slack uh, yeah, about it. It's funny. I mean, I know, I know. Right these, now we're, these we're jokes, above it all, and we're these sick jokes of the are whole, years like, old when yeah. he was, first got on. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, mean, I know jokes. we're above it all, and we're we're over the whole like, hey, Johnny Gears of War is taking over Microsoft and stuff like that. But yeah. come on, it's Doug yeah. Bowser. That's pretty great. Yeah. It yeah. is pretty great. Yeah. yeah, it was it was great for the like 0.5 seconds when the news broke, and then Twitter uh, exhausted it. You got to and, and if anyone Phil knows about exhausting, about exhausting joke, jokes, if anyone knows, wow, about yeah. stretching a joke too thin, me, mm-hmm. it, so uh huh, yep, yeah. true. I don't saying. disagree with any of that. There you go. Uh, there you go. then there was a headline. The, the one, the one that I did find funny, uh huh, of all this was a site called The Hard Times, uh, uh-huh. did a headline, and it's sort of like The Onion for various things uh and honestly their text not worth reading but the headline <laughs> is good game industry marvels as employee leaves job by choice oh i saw that yeah, yeah that was good yeah. <laughs> hey, i like that one stick that burn is a sick burn <laughs> yeah oh 
anyway, but yeah, uh, Doug Bowser, who is VP of sales and marketing is going mm -hmm. to succeed uh, Reggie in the role and the transition happens on April 15th. So, yep. There you go. And uh, they released a video, Reggie thanking Nintendo fans everywhere for the last 15 years um, that he's been at the company. So, yep. yeah, that uh, it's. But if you were a fan before he was there, screw you. It's a changing of the guard for sure. Uh, yes. Reggie has been like an amazing sport in all of those Nintendo Direct and E3 videos. Uh, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll, it's the end of an era and we'll have to see how, uh, Doug and Nintendo, uh, march forward. It's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing that he's going to do is throw just the gaming universe into, to chaos by yeah. bringing Halo to, <laughs> to, to the switch. Oh, well, yes. Thank you for that transition there. Well, Phil. it stopped being a transition now that you pointed it out. So thank, <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Speaking yeah. of Halo on the Switch. Uh, yeah, there were a bunch of rumors. The rumor uh -huh. mill was really mixing it up last week. Uh, the first rumor is that Microsoft is bringing Game Pass and Xbox One first-party titles to the Nintendo Switch. Well, there you go. Yeah. But that's not really happening, right? I don't know. Could it happen? Well, I mean, anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> if I mean, they they allow streaming services to be on the Switch, and if uh, Game Pass, if this is done through streaming, where you're not actually like buying a game on the Switch hardware, yeah, but uh, I mean, Game Pass done? downloads the files onto the hardware. It's not really streaming. That's correct, but of course, Microsoft is is big into that Project X stream thing that they have going. Uh, as well hmm so yeah is this is the does this mean ports and uh game pass or does it mean streaming game pass games because if it's if it's bringing game pass then it would have to be more than just microsoft's own first party titles right sure that don't that don't either you know some do and some don't have nintendo switch versions oh i see what you're saying yeah well yeah, i mean that yeah that could be a thing i guess if you want to make it a value proposition Right. Uh, you'd want to bring over the whole library. You'd want that to be streaming. Right. So, right. so CJ. Yeah. When the idea entered your head. Uh huh. Continue. Of, oh, yeah. Continue. <laughs> please, 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 please. I can, I can hear him unzipping please. his pants right now. Uh, <laughs> Which head? What? Please, uh, when, when the idea entered your head. Uh huh. About Sea of Thieves. Yeah. On Nintendo Switch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how quickly did you fill the cup? <laughs> Yikes! Wow, that's gross. Uh, instantaneous. In other news, <laughs> in other news, CJ and his wife are expecting their second child. <laughs> here's no, here's the, the other idea. Thing. She the was idea. on the other side of the house at the time. <laughs> on the other side of the country. <laughs> the idea that uh, I could play Sea of Thieves on the Switch is, of course, very exciting to Yes, it is. Yes. So. Uh, we'll see, but uh, I mean, that goes for any game. I, I, I think a lot of uh, games after Fortnite and Rocket League have started doing cross platform, cross progression types of things. Yeah. Uh, for multiplayer games, that's it's started to become like a really important thing to sort of uh, combine your player pool so that everybody gets a good experience in multiplayer. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are, there are still some big titles that aren't. Uh, being done that way most recently apex legends is not uh, cross platform or cross progression um so if if like streaming a game from xbox to the nintendo switch kind of like skirts that and allows you to you know do that a little bit um, i'm all for that sure that's that sounds great to me as a as a consumer that sounds great to me uh I don't know if Nintendo would allow it on their platform. Like, I think that's a whole uh, separate issue, really, because, you know, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo all have streaming video services on their platforms, even if in Sony and Microsoft's case, they also sell movies or rent movies for mm -hmm. for pay. So is is games any different than that? Uh, especially if you can't buy the games on uh, that platform, like Amazon Prime Video is on iOS, but you can't buy 
movies directly in that application. Mm. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I still think that, yeah, I mean, I, until it's like truly a streaming service, I feel like this is kind of a non conversation. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, you're really talking about porting games to the Switch at that point. Right. That's, right. that's really not about porting games to the Switch. Yeah. And it's a different conversation. It is altogether. a different conversation. Yeah. But Microsoft already has Minecraft out on multiple platforms, sure. including the Switch. Yeah. Is it is it that crazy to think they could do that with other other titles as well? well no, while still crazy. while still selling think it. their own hardware. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of like a dogs I, and cats living together yeah, type I, of. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. It's moment here. Yeah, sure it is. But I mean, we all thought this was. The, I mean, back in the early '90s, we always talked about how impossible it was that like Sonic would ever be on a Nintendo system or yeah. yeah. I mean you think Crash back Bandicoot to the early eighties or Crash Bandicoot being on something else or, or you think back to like the early eighties and I mean you could play Atari twenty six hundred games on non Atari consoles. Yep. You yep. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's unprecedented. Yeah. And the interesting thing just in terms of Microsoft themselves, like if you look at Microsoft as a company and a platform like Office three sixty five where it doesn't matter what platform you're on. You have a subscription to Office apps and can use them anywhere. Um, if you start to extend that to, okay, a movie platform or a music platform or whatever, and why not games too? Like yeah. it's, It kind of starts yeah. to make sense. The only difference, I think, is whether or not a particular hardware company would allow it. Like Nintendo, I think... Uh, you know, over the last year, and especially when uh, with the Minecraft crossplay thing, and where they were both t- so on social media, kind of tweeting at each other, a lot of love. Uh, that was interesting. You have to wonder what uh, would happen with the with Sony. Like, would Sony allow a, uh, Game Pass? On, I mean, I think on the PlayStation platform. I think with Minecraft, that you're talking about, like that that was an established mega hit, right? That yes. it was in everyone's best interest to have it on their console. I mean, that would move right. systems, right? right? So it's a, it's a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, like I said, if it goes to purely streaming service, like the way that uh, PS Now is set up right now, mm-hmm. I could see that being another system. Sure, why not? But I mean, yeah. then the question becomes not only, not not really that so much as like, okay, but if I'm so. Uh, Sony in particular, that doesn't make any sense. Microsoft, it might, depending on how the Xbox is really doing. It's not doing as well as they hoped. I don't think it's ever really recovered from its launch. Mm-hmm, right. um, so yeah, then the question becomes like, well, do we do we think that this the amount of subscriptions we would get if we, we were released on the Switch would offset the further degradation of Xbox sales? Or is it, I mean, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that a couple years ago when they announced, like, you know, all first party uh, Xbox games coming to uh, coming anywhere. coming to play any like, yeah, exactly. Coming to PC and yeah. on our streaming service day one. Like, well, yeah. then, you know, I don't need to buy an Xbox one then if I have a decent PC. So, OK. Yeah. But yeah. And yeah, I guess the question is, then, does Microsoft necessarily care if you buy a box if you are in the Xbox "Quote unquote ecosystem, right? And the question, yeah, if I think you're looking, if you're looking like, at something like uh, you know Netflix when they started streaming, like their whole thing was we need this software everywhere, and right. <laughs> basically everything could play uh, Netflix, and mm-hmm. that was how they kind of that that's how Netflix came to be the big right yeah. giant in video that they are right now. Disrupting the difference there is that they weren't trying to sell their own hardware on top of that. Are true. We- are we starting to see the realization of the 3DO dream? The 3DO uh, is just, of, I was thinking something along those lines. Of, like, where 3DO <laughs> is the platform and you have like Samsung and, and uh, Gold I think Star. We're seeing and, it in reverse. Yeah. But uh, that's just it. Way, what I was going to say, like in all seriousness, which is I think is what you're getting at, is like, are we seeing the, the further evidence that Microsoft wants to get out of game, like, could be gaming hardware. specific hardware right right and xbox becomes a service and not a yeah. well why can't it platform? be both 
Well, I'm, I'm not. I know that's why. Why can't it, it be could both? be both? What I'm yeah. saying is that there's there are questions there where you want to like again. Does this offset the amount of consoles we won't sell? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we, I think well, you know, I think the other interesting thing is that Sony. You know, you mentioned PS Now, and we've talked about remote play for a, a while. Like, I think remote play was the secret best feature of the Vita, although mm. not all that easy to use and uh, very finicky about settings, even even the version on the PC that you can set up now, like they don't hype that as a feature at all. And it, I don't think it's been updated in a long time, mm. <laughs> but it's like, again, Sony has all of these like technologies like they did PS now and uh, they did remote play like they don't seem to be leaning into it as much as Microsoft seems to be leaning into, you know, play the play the games on your Xbox, play them on your PC. We don't care as long as you're in the Xbox ecosystem. We're fine with that. And as somebody who uh, recently bought a gaming PC, uh, I really appreciate being able to hop back and forth between platforms. Like I found that really useful. So Uh, I think that the difference there too, though, is that on the PC, they have a vested interest because windows, right? Right. Sure. Sure. And and again, how's the Xbox doing? Because you know, I mean, the PlayStation Four is doing fine. The Switch is doing fine. That's right. Yeah. You know, do they care about how well the Xbox does at this point? Or well, I think, I think now it's amassing troops at the border for the next thing, right? Like I, all of I, I look at all of what Microsoft has been doing as uh, not only keeping current xbox fans loyal to that platform by offering more things but setting it up for for the next generation so that they have all this stuff with backwards compatibility all the way to the original xbox ready to go for whatever their next thing is then when you have a new console that can play or stream titles dating back to the early 2000s like you really have a great value proposition then not only for people who want to buy a high-end piece of hardware, but for the sort of value conscious budget gamers that that most often sit out until the latter part of the generation, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. So they could be doing that. And then that's a, I think that's a really interesting, smart move. It's a matter of what announcements they make next and whether any of this is actually true. <laughs> right. whether they're actually going to bring game pass to nintendo switch uh another rumor um that there that uh, came out last week that microsoft is going to talk about the next generation consoles at e3 hmm. about friggin time although i think about i think when i think about this i think it's kind of an easy rumor to 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 put out there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> seems like you know, Street Fighter Four is in the works or whatever from the early EGM. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, yeah. it has been, like, what? It came out, I'm looking it up. So the Xbox One came out in 2013. That's right. So, yeah. I mean, it has been six years. We are ready yeah, we are. traditionally yeah. to hear about the next round of hardware. Now we've done iterative right. hardware this this generation, but... You're absolutely right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, another rumor that came out last week um, started, I believe, with... Uh, Game Informer's Imran Khan, who went on the Kind of Funny um, podcast and mentioned something about a, a a very publicly canceled game coming to the Nintendo Switch, and then people mm. started trying to guess what that was, yeah. and it has transformed into Scalebound coming back for the Nintendo Didn't they Switch. they already debunk that? I don't know if it was debunked, okay. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, and when it, all anyone could think of was uh, was scale bound, that became the thing. So that, I mean, that could be interesting if if true. But again, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are getting really worked up about rumors that uh, that may or may not be true. By the way, if you're talking about publicly uh, canceled games, let's bring back True Fantasy Live Online. Oh man, I, remember that was going to be like the, the thing. Yeah. I played it. At, I played it at TGS. I got, oh, I got yeah, this little right. like, note, notebook here, too, that I'm holding up for Explain the Explain what it is, CJ, for people who don't know what True Fantasy Live Online True was. Fantasy Live Online, okay, was a level five online RPG for the original Xbox um, done, like, after, I think it was after, no, before Dragon Quest uh, Eight. Oh, yeah. When yeah. level five was starting to get popular as a Japanese developer, right? And... Uh, it was supposed to be like a big online service thing that uh, 
it was like the first console MMO and uh, it didn't come out. It got canceled. Well, it yeah. wouldn't have been the first console MMO because wasn't, wouldn't that have been fantasy star? Uh, well, that maybe be not fantasy even. star and MMO. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it got canceled and it looked great and uh, played well mm-hmm. from what I played of it, uh, but it got canceled. And anyway, so scale bound, who knows if that'll be a thing. Uh, obviously, Nintendo has a relationship with Platinum, so anything's possible there. Um, speaking of Xbox stuff, mm-hmm. I want to mention Headlander is coming to, is out now actually for your Xbox Game Pass. If you, are you don't work for them that, anymore, CJ. Yeah, you, don't you have can to... you can download Headlander, and I I really think you should if you've not played it. You should. Headlander is a lot of fun. Headlander one of my favorite is, is games and. And it did not sell what I had hoped that it would. So, and it's a great game. And Double Fine, uh, it was a, such a pleasure working with them. And Lee Petty, the director of the game, is just uh, an amazing, amazing director. So, um, yeah, people who have uh, Xbox One and Game Pass, download Headlander today and play it. Yeah, it is a good. Game. I don't. E- I don't even work for Adult Swim Games, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I need to download it. So, give it a try. Do you get any uh, sort of residual checks from them? Is yeah. that what this is? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. Another, uh, well, this isn't a rumor, I guess. Um, Google is doing a, uh, a presentation at GDC this year, which is coming up in a, a little less than a month mm-hmm. now. Um, They're going to announce their long rumored gaming hardware. Uh, the mm. Project Yeti thing that. Uh, get ready to Yeti. Get ready, ready to, to Yeti. Yeti? <laughs> is, this a, is this an urban yeti sequel uh no no yeah, it is well, not no it is not hard so, pass apparently <laughs> the rumor is hardware uh is in, is going to be a thing plus they had been doing that streaming uh beta uh with assassin's creed odyssey right uh where mm-hmm. you can stream it over the web and play so very interesting to see what they have and uh who they have on board because Obviously, the biggest game in the world is Fortnite, and Fortnite on Android uh, isn't available on the Google Play Store. It's like they have people go to a separate uh, Epic uh, website to install Mm. Fortnite because they didn't want to pay the 30% cut uh, that Google takes out of, you know, software purchases. Um, So it's going to be very interesting to see who, who they've got lined up. Uh, what games are coming? What exclusive? Do they have any exclu- exclusives? Do they have any? Uh, are they doing in, in, any internally developed games? Who knows? Mm. We'll see. So that that's exciting. So will this uh, this uh, Google system, this Google video game system, have hidden microphones in it? <laughs> that's Amazon. No, they're not going to hide them, huh? Isn't that Amazon? Oh no, Google does that too. Yeah, no, the. Uh... Was it the the Nest? Oh, right, the Nest. The Google the Google Nest uh, security someone system. Dis- yeah, someone discovered that there are like really a hidden, hidden mic. Yeah, this just came. It came That's past amazing. week. I've- no notifier phone uh, uh, that Google did not mention was part of the uh, the device that is in the device, and Google's like, oh well, I mean, it's not active. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. we don't have it. All we, don't have on. Turn, huh? we don't have it on. <laughs> yeah, I there mean, are microphones there, but they're not on. Yeah, I mean, they're sound activated. <laughs> so if you're quiet, no one's going to hear anything. You, do you guys, but you have both have uh, Amazon Echoes, right? Yep, I do. Do you find that occasionally they just turn on and say something yep. when you are not at all <laughs> saying the keyword? Like it's I'll have it glow I mean, blue and like spin around yeah. and say like I didn't understand what you were saying or whatever or and just you're like, glow blue for a while. To you, I've only had it happen like two or three times. Yeah, and I was yeah, assuming it, it's, just because I said something that could be mistaken. That's yeah, yeah kind of yeah. the same thing I've had. Yeah, that happens a lot with my uh, Xbox as well. It turns on oh, really? uh, my PlayStation camera does Cortana. a lot. Oh yeah, PlayStation camera. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, you don't even need the camera. You just do. You just put a microphone on it, and it'll yeah. think it heard you say PlayStation, and it ducks, yes. it ducks all the audio, and and that little blue bar pop, pops up at the bottom, and just oh, like, wow. yeah, 
Well, in uh, the case of Cortana, I turned all that stuff off, yet it still it still comes on <laughs> when it thinks I'm it heard a, something. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Christopher. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't let you take that screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Media Molecules Dreams uh, game, because they are mm-hmm. launching a creator early access uh, yeah. later this spring. So it'll be $29.99 to get in the early access thing. They seem to be hinting that uh, it's a limited thing, so they may actually like pull it once they think they have enough people in the door. Mm. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll get that, and I guess also the full slate of content when it's available. Um, but that's pr- it's a pretty interesting way to release this game that has been kicking around for a long time now. No. Sure. <laughs> sure. You got it, dude. <laughs> you got are you at all interested in uh dreams? No. Can't say that I am. They make amazing games that are just not for me. I am interested in it uh almost purely because my daughter really likes building things in uh Dragon Quest Builders and she recently really got into the creator mode of or the creative mode of Fortnite hmm. and really just wants to build things out of this out of the tool sets that are in there. Uh, not actually play the game. So I think she is going to be really interested in this. And Mm -hmm. just from seeing the content that is in like their early access beta trailer that people were making, I'm, I'm just, I'm really interested in playing it. I'm of course not interested in creating anything myself, just like with Mario maker. I didn't really do any levels myself, but uh, I'm interested in seeing what other people have. Uh, yeah, and playing playing those things. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, PlayStation game getting an early access release. There you go. All right, I think then we should get into what you've been playing. <laughs> Wait a second. Treat, 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 treat. That's not no. Uh, it's wrong. Geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's wrong. Better. But Phil, you want to go first? Go ahead. Oh gosh, Please. I, I've, you know what? All I've been playing this week is more Crackdown. Yeah. So on the Genesis, that's Crackdown the one. Too. We're gonna keep it going. I love it. I love it. It's a running <laughs> gag. Mm-hmm. It is. I've it been is. playing more Crackdown three. And yeah, silly me, yeah. I've, I've, I've been continuing to enjoy it. So. Me too. Stop it. I have Sorry. been playing more, and I have been continuing to enjoy it. I, I do find though, What's uh, that? you play it for a while, and then. You, you like you take down whatever the next thing is and you're like okay like i'm a, i'm at a good stopping point like it's it's uh you know i i i really like it until i don't really want to play anymore really it. in that session like i really have a lot of fun with it and then i'm like okay i'm done i okay. you, i've been having kind of the opposite problem i mean this is the same yeah. problem i had with uh, the first crackdown don't get where... me wrong i love or love, I, love the game. I will I will beat a, a a mission or you know take over base or something and then just kind of be okay. I think I can turn this off right now. And then I happen to glance up and see a an orb somewhere, and it's like, well, if I'm I should yeah. go grab this orb now because <laughs> I will forget where it is and I'll I won't yeah. have it uh, next time I boot up the game. Yeah. And, and then it's like, oh, it's like, oh geez, a vehicle I'm, locked down in the area. Yeah, I'm, I'm, geez, I'm, I'm like right next to one of those uh, propaganda towers. I might as well just climb that. Yeah, and 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 then it it spirals from there. Yeah. So, yeah, right. still having fun with Crackdown. So me too. I again, too. you know, still uh, disappointed at the kind of waste of of Terry Crews as a personality. Well, they- they added a bonus. Did you download the bonus uh, DLC pack that came out? Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear about this. No. What's uh, the bonus yeah. DLC pack? Is it a personality pack? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so it includes like. Uh, does it? Does it? New... Does it make Terry Crews come to my place and cradle me in his giant, loving <laughs> arms while I play? Oh, baby. <laughs> because I don't know. Would you pay? How many months of Game Pass would you uh, buy? To get 
get that. at least four. I that mean, bonus. what's what's the what's the maximum you can have on your system <laughs> at any given time? Is there like a uh-huh. is it cap of like five years or something? Or I don't think there's a maximum. No, because I, I think I have what? two. I have two years on mine currently. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. There's a so there's a a bonus thing. I I didn't really. I, I, I glanced at it. It was in uh-huh. uh, their developer update video when they were talking about all of the uh, issues that they're planning on solving in the next patch. Yeah. Um, they announced a uh, bonus DLC pack that you can download now that includes a new skin for uh, Jackson specifically. And okay. uh, <laughs> does it also, just make him look like his Brooklyn Nine Nine character? No. Oh. <laughs> and also uh, a couple new guns that are. Wait, Terry uh, Crews is in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yes, Wait, I didn't what? Know you didn't I've know never that? seen Brooklyn. No, I oh yeah, he's that. one of the one of the main characters. Oh, cool. you should watch he's, it. He's, the, he's like the sergeant. It. Yeah, you would like it, but uh, g- give it three or four episodes. Okay, I, I like to anyway. consider. I like Terry to consider crack, Crackdown Three to me is the unofficial Brooklyn Nine Nine video game. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would play a Brooklyn Nine Nine <laughs> where video it's game. just uh, Sergeant Terry picking up cards because again, yeah. uh, Terry Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, Terry throwing cars around is kind of in character, right? True, true. So, yes, kind of in character. There we go. Yeah, it works. It works out. Yeah. Except for all the swearing. Well, you know. But, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm uh, really enjoying Crackdown Three as well. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I downloaded the DLC uh, for some reason. It downloaded it on the Xbox, but then when I tried to get it on the PC, it it didn't know what I was talking oh, about. Oh, really? So. Yeah, I'm gonna try downloading it on my Switch. See how that I works. Don't think you can, I, I don't think yeah, you should do try that. that. Yep. Yeah, okay. But imagine playing, imagine playing Game Pass games on your Switch. <laughs> like imagine having Crackdown portably. That's that nice. would be great. That's a nice. That would be nice great. vision of the future there. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, that's that's about all I've been playing. Well, I've been playing Crackdown Three. Well, nobody Love asked you, life, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Greg, also, what have you been playing? Load it up. No, <laughs> no, let me speak. Yeah, let me great. speak. <laughs> uh, I've uh, I rebooted up uh, Breath of the Wild and started a new playthrough. Oh, Jesus, that's the uh, that's the Zelda <laughs> game that came out on Switch. It's the Zelda game that came out on Switch. Yeah, I am so hyped uh, that we're gonna get a good Zelda game this year. Yikes, on wow, Switch. Bro, bro, finally, uh, no, yeah, I'm finally, just, I'm just playing. We already got a good Zelda game this year. Zelda 2 came out like last. Oh, week. The, Touche. Done. Yep. No. Uh, so I restarted Breath of the Wild <laughs> yeah. and uh, started playing it. Uh, so I just, I really, about Breath of the Wild? <laughs> I really like that world and uh, yeah, running around as Link. It's called, I think it's yeah. called Hyrule. Hyrule is the name of that so world. I'm, I, I'm only on the Great Plateau right now. I need to, on the Plateau. I, I do seriously need to sit down and, and play more Breath of the Wild because you didn't I finish it. Oh, not even close. Okay. Not even close. I I do need to sit down and and get back into that. Uh, I put 110 hours into it the first time around. Jeez, Louise. So see that 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 doesn't but, uh, you tell me need, on a game. You don't need to though. That's really? The thing you don't need to spend 110 hours. You can get uh, to the end of. It. I mean, the speed runs for Breath of the Wild. Uh, they have them beating it in like a half hour. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can yeah, do this okay. though. I'm not going to speed run it. You can I do, do not it. Have, I do not have the wherewithal, <laughs> or certainly the skills to speed run anything. Right. So, right. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. What, what's a nice median? Where where can I fall from from uh, insane speed runner and insane? I'm going to spend a hundred hours on this. Where's a nice? Uh, hmm. You could probably do it in half that you could probably do it in 50 or less jeez oh, okay probably less okay <laughs> it's, not, it's not that hard especially you know if what? you've already if you've already played a whole bunch of it well i haven't played a whole bunch of it oh okay let's not, let's not kid ourselves here what was spider-man oh. spider-man was like what 15 hours yeah something like, like 15 that. to 20 something like that yeah that's what i don't think you yeah, I, I I like that length a lot, but uh, somehow I you know the other nice thing about Spider Man was in Breath of the Wild. The web the shooters thing? never broke. Very good point. Wow, very <laughs> good point. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> they didn't. They did, and at no point, at no point did I say to myself, "Gosh, I wish these uh, web shooters would just stop working." 
Yeah. And I'd, and I'd have to like <laughs> run around and find new web shooters. Wow. Wow. Hmm. I mean, okay. He ain't wrong, folks. Also, at no point did I ever think, boy, I just wish this was linked to the past. <laughs> now, that's Yikes. not fair because I think that about most games. I think that. I know, but I didn't think about Spider Man. That's what I'm going to I mean, Link Between Worlds is a better game anyway. Whatever. So, We're whoa, not getting into that. <laughs> let's, just, hold on. let's just go with that. Uh, I also played a bunch of Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, I was inspired by you saying that you played some of it last week, Greg. So good. And uh, went back. There's play, a game uh, I never wish was linked to the past. Ah. <laughs> Although sometimes I wish it was Doki Doki Panic. Mm. I've never played Doki Doki Panic. Feels a purist. Never, yeah. never played I don't it. think I don't think I have either, now that you mention yeah. it. Or now that I, I mention it and then you respond to that. <laughs> I right. Don't, I've never played it. I don't think I have either. Yeah. I love Super Mario 2, though. It's it's weird that Nintendo hasn't released Doki Doki Panic on well, you know, well, but there's a Fuji con- TV thing, right? I was going to say, isn't Doki oh, Doki Yeah, Panic I guess it is. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. It's a license. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, if they're not going to do Popeye. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Oh. I did, um, with the the Nintendo uh, classics for the, the online service, that app program, yeah. whatever it is on the Switch that you boot up to play all the uh, Nintendo games, uh, I have the Japanese one as well. Oh right! Did you, yeah. did you do that? Did you make a Japanese? I did account? not. I did okay. not because I hear then your news feed is all messed up with like double posts. Of well, I suppose it's not care. Don't even a, look at the news feed. I, I look at it all. I look at. I, I like it. I, I suppose it's messed up if you think the Japanese language is messed up. No. Mm-hmm. no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I guess no. we learned something about CJ today. My I goodness. mean, yeah. Have- Double posts on Nintendo Directs and uh, information. You do, you do, but I mean, it's it's the news. Ch- are you are you seriously going into the news channel a lot? I am oh, actually. DJ. I probably boot into the news like every other time I boot up my Switch. That's weird, dude. That is weird. Why? Whatever the Why? case is, I I I uh, have my Japanese account on my Switch, and I downloaded the Famicom yes uh, version, uh, <laughs> which is which is fun because you get to see instead of having the array of of uh, NES box arts, you see all the Famicom box arts. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's it's really amusing too because you know NES boxes all Correctly. have a uniform standard well, size. Yeah, they have a standard size, whereas Famicom games the boxes are various sizes. So let's be yeah, honest, they, most Famicom game boxes were adorable. Well, of course yes. they were because yes. they were like almost the exact size of the cartridge, weren't they? Uh, they yeah, yeah. We were just like, ah, yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, and um, uh. uh there are, I believe there's two games available on the Famicom service that are not on the NES service. Right. Which are, uh, wh- I mean, neither of them are particularly good. Uh, but um, one of them came out a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, maybe. It was earlier. Uh, it's some sort of like fighting game. Okay. Urban Champion? Uh, no, it is. It is not a, <laughs> not it is not a game that was released over here. I forget the name of it. Uh, but just coming out this past good week. Talk. What? Good talk. Good talk. Thank, thank you. You forgot, the, forgot the name of it. Man, I forget the name of it. The shade. I know. <laughs> well, CJ's probably like it's probably some stupid Japanese name that I can't even I read. Know. That weird Moon all. Man language. <laughs> wow. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I'm the one who knows j- a little Japanese too. And the one who knows a little Japanese too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Assuming uh, my sen, I'm uh, trying to speak here. Okay. Um, uh Nice. I, know nice. A little, I, know I learned all my Japanese from Ranma One Half as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I learned uh, Sumimasen uh, from uh, when I was going to Japan. That was one of the, the phrase, the, the minimal number of phrases. I hear that they I have the best stuff. Coke ever in Japan. Oh, they do. Well, it's made it's with animal Pepsi. fat. It's Pepsi. What? Oh, was it the Pepsi? best Pepsi ever? Is that Sorry. what it is, really? Yeah. Sorry, I forgot which one was the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, Inside joke. The uh, that we're not no, going to all, all, all the all the uh, <laughs> all the Japanese I learned from Ranma one half, I think, uh, pretty much equates to Akane chan no panty. There but, you go, so a, ho- a little hop sigh action, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we're old, <laughs> oh, I love Ranma one half, <laughs> we are so old. <laughs> 
<laughs> that show was so much fun. Oh. That show is fun. Hey, Viz is finally releasing the Urusi Yatsura uh, manga here in I the U.S. That. I, I got that. I got the first volume of it, and I have volumes two through four pre-ordered on Amazon. Those so. will be out in four years. <laughs> no. no, there's there's they like out, they come there's out like more two or three months in between each release. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, no, the other uh, Famicom game that just came out this week is a Tecmo uh, Sumo Wrestling game. Oh, so well, is that that platformer or is it an actual? No, it, it's an actual like oh, it's a, okay. like it's a sports game because there is a platformer that stars a sumo wrestler. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was watching because I've been sort for, of going through. Famicom? Yeah, I've been sort of going through uh Jeremy Parrish's videos because I was way behind on them. Right. He, he does this chrono chronological those cron yeah, game and, series and, on and Game NES, Boy. NES works. NES works. Yes, yeah. that's what it ended up being called. It was called yeah, a few different it was, things at first. I think it was NES World originally. No, it was Game Boy World. Uh, Good Intentions. Was oh, the, yeah, NES. that's right. Uh, Good yeah. Intentions. Yeah. And then, and he, then he, the he, Super Nintendo was Mode Seven, and then he sort of consolidated consolidated all the names. Anyway, brand, yeah, NES works. He he mentioned something, and he there was a brief flash that he he was talking about because the NES works. He's only talking about games that released in North America. Right. Um. He's not. Ta- he's not covering Famicom games. Uh, this, and, this ain't Crontendo. Right. And there was one he showed where it was like a platformer that you play as a sumo wrestler, which is oh, like, okay. oh my god, I need to try this. So, <laughs> uh. Now this, yeah, this is an actual like, you know, recreation of the sport kind of uh, sumo okay. wrestling game. So well, and you, you should, should mention that uh, if you have the Nintendo Switch online service and you have a Japanese account on your yeah. s- machine, you get you can uh, you can access that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That what, kind of the whole point of what Phil's been talking about for the last twenty minutes. Yeah, but people may not know that. He yeah. just people just anyway. explaining it. People may not know the thing that I was just <sighs> explaining. <laughs> Fine, you need Fine. it explained to you. So what uh, so happens? You, you get an you get a Nintendo Switch. Okay, you, <laughs> you plug it in, you power it on. You got to subscribe. Open the box first. Open the box oh, first. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm missing crucial steps. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So, so you're been, playing Mario 2. I'm playing Mario 2. Right. And in, enjoying that a whole lot. It's a great uh, game. Yeah. I look forward to stuffing vegetables in warts. Oh, mouth. my gosh. Oh, okay. You got a weird thing with warts. <laughs> 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 what? I love Super Mario Brothers 2. What can I say? Uh, I've also been playing Super Mario Party. This has kind of become like a, a thing we've been doing as a family. We sit down and we play a 10 rounds or 15 round game of Super Mario Party. And uh, the new one for Switch is really, really fun. Um, I'm having. Have, we're ten, having a blast with the family. What? Or no? It's it's called it's 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 not numbered, right? It's just called Super Mario Party. Yeah. Okay. So it's the like old ones, the old ones were just Mario Party, right? Yes. And now it's Super Mario Party. Oh, that's we, correct. We, we rebooted the series. Is that they rebooted on? it? Yeah. yeah. And this okay. one, I guess, doesn't have all the mini games or whatever, but uh, it works really well. You play it on a single Joy-Con. Each player gets a single Joy-Con. You can't play it any other way. Okay. Um, but uh, we're having a ton of fun with it. We're getting to the point where we already know how to play the mini games when they come up. Uh, but it's got a it's got a really good sort of um, everyone can practice the game before uh, having to play it for real, right. and it uh, it's a really nice interface for practicing. And so, like, my daughter and my wife, uh, who have not plan- been playing video games for 30 years or whatever, uh, can can get get the feel of what they have to do and then uh, play. So it's a pretty even playing field when you play that. Um, and we've been having a lot of fun. We've been playing it uh, on the weekends. Nice. Cool. After we wake up. So it's how fun. Many, how many Joy-Cons do you have in your household? <sighs> Phil, 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 Phil. Oh, boy. <laughs> so <laughs> we have two switches. Do you have more? That question Joy-Con? has a lot of answers. Do you have more Joy Cons than you have Game Boy systems? Uh no. no. <laughs> okay. The answer Good to that is no. Good to know. Uh certainly not Joy Con pairs. Uh, right. But so yeah, I bought we have two switches in the house. And then right. I also right. had the four more Joy Cons. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so yep. Uh, I, I had the, the red and blue, uh, system and then I bought the gray system, uh, as well. And then I bought the, the opposite pair of red and blue and switched it. So I have blue, all blue joy cons and my daughter has all red joy cons on hers. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, so we have what six Joy Cons? That would be six. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That is fewer than I expected. I have. There to you go. Yeah. I was expecting Certainly, upwards. Of we know people who have more. Than that well, yes, of course than I do. Yeah. Of course. All right. Uh, and that's all I've been playing. So, Greg, tell us about what you've got. Um. So I I started playing Zelda too <laughs> this past week. Okay. I threatened uh, I threatened that I was going to uh, start that game when it came out on the 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 um, Nintendo Online service mm-hmm. for uh, my Tuesday night streams on uh, on Twitch TV slash Stewart because uh, just do retro nights. So I've been playing Fantasy Star, um, yeah. the the uh, M two remake, right? Sega um, Ages. Sega Ages, yeah. And then this came out, so I'm I'm going back and forth between the two of them. <clears throat> so yeah, like I, I played. Uh, a part of Zelda 2, like, I, I I don't know what it is about that game. Every now and then I would boot it up anyway. And, of course, easy to go and beat the first castle. Sure. Uh, I've probably played through that castle about a million times. Maybe not a million, but at least hundreds. Um, so that part of the game was very familiar. But it's kind of cool to actually, you know, really sort of uh, push through and play. Because I played a good hour and a half of it this week. Um, so I actually beat the first two castles. And was kind of like, okay, in, in Zelda 2, um, the way the game works is if you have three lives, but if you lose them, you don't lose your progress. You start over uh, in what's called the North Castle, which is the starting point of the game. But to get to that area is pretty much blocked off. There's one road that's blocked by a gigantic boulder, and there's one road that you have to get through a, 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 a cave with a big like a, a large jump that you need the jump magic to get across so like if you go to do the second castle or you even finish the second castle and that's kind of where you stop and you die then every time you restart it's kind of a pain in the ass to get south of where you begin mm-hmm. um because you have to go to this long circuitous route and it just it just kind of sucks so i did um death mountain which in zelda 2 death mountain is just a series of of caves when you're in the overworld you have no idea yeah. where you're going to come out it's like a maze right it's a maze yeah. but it's a maze where every time you go into a doorway you actually have a side scrolling cave section to mm. complete right some of them have multiple paths and they're really hard they're really hard like i'd forgotten because there's this character there's this enemy that shows up right around that time there's two versions of it. there's an orange version he has an axe and he just he just swings it fast enough that it's hard to fight him. But then if you come across the red version, he throws the axe, hmm. and your your shield doesn't stop it. So um, anyway, I, I powered through that. And of course, at the end of that, uh, when you when you get through Death Mountain, you can fall into another cave and you get the hammer, which in Zelda Two the hammer removes these gigantic boulders, this roadblock. So I got that far that night. So I was really happy with with the progress I made. Game's super hard in in spots. It's got yeah. some major difficulty spikes, which is the main complaint that most people have about that game. But um, man, I still love it. I still love that game. Mm. I I don't know what I mean. Part of it is nostalgia, obviously, because Zelda Two was the Zelda that was out when I got my NES. Um, so it was kind of like the big game at the time. Um, it's kind of the, that way for everything. So I talked about this last week. How on the old, like on the NES, the second game in all of these different series was kind of the oddball game. Yeah, like you know, we just finished talking about Mario Two. Now, of course, what we got wasn't the original Mario Two, but that's what we knew it as, right. which is a completely different game from Super Mario Brothers and Castlevania Two. Completely different game from Castlevania and Zelda Two and um metroid 2 was like the game boy exclusive that wasn't really didn't really feel like metroid it felt a little more arcadey and um but that was kind of the time that i got into the nes was then all those those oddball sequels were happening so i just adore zelda 2 um Mm -hmm. very difficult but i'm still when i play it too i'm still really impressed with the side scrolling segments in that game and the main thing that I, i i love is the 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 shield like to be able to to block high and low, that wasn't normal for a side-scrolling action game, right? Back then, yeah. it was it was it was pretty impressive for the time, and it added a whole lot of um, uh, strategy to to the the side-scrolling action bits, 
which is the majority of the game. Um, so I think it's, you know, and it holds up. I think it really holds up. It's difficult and yeah, some pacing issues, but it does really hold up. So uh, I'm really, I really enjoy what I played so far. Now I'm going to, you know, move into the next part of the continent and tackle the next couple of castles and we'll see how that goes. But, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed what I played of it. Um, so, you know, Tuesday nights, come check it out. Um, I also finished Adrift, finally. Okay. Uh, so this is that uh, game from, I don't remember. Adam Orth? Yes. Um, where you're basically, you wake up, you, you're the commander of a space station that has basically disintegrated. You, the game starts where you wake up, you're in a, a leaky space suit. Um, and you kind of just have to work your way through. It's a walking simulator, but in space, so it's a floating simulator. Mm. Um, we have to work your way through uh, the wreckage of this space station to A, put together the stories of the other characters that are gone now, and B, to obviously find a way to escape back to Earth. Um, the game's like six hours long. It should have been about two hours long. Mm. There's not much mm. to do in that game. Um, I went and actually checked out an IGN review of, of it when it came out and, and, and the reviewer made some excellent points and that's one of them. He said like, this is a two hour idea that they stretched into a six hour game. And what that means is just that there's like multiple systems that need to be repaired so that you can get the escape, um, pod or the craft working. But the, the way to do that is exactly the same every single time. It's like, this doesn't work so go here and manufacture this little disc thing and now you have to go place it in this very particular room and now one of four of these things is fixed now go do it again and again mm -hmm. and again and hey then there's this other system and there's four of those that need to be fixed and they're all done the exact same way so go do that four times um it really really for a six hour game it really overstays its welcome mm -hmm. um, that's unfortunate and then the problem is that there's no climax to it, uh, the, which is the worst part. It's like I didn't even realize I was at the end of the game, and I was sort of finishing it off at one point. Um, my kids were my my two oldest were in the room, and they were kind of watching it. And this this hatch opens that you know it looks a little different than all the other hatches in the game. And I'm like, I think maybe I just finished this, but I wasn't huh. sure. And then the credits rolled. I was like, okay, I finished it. Really cool idea that it is, you know, it should have been like two hours long. Ah, it would have been great yeah. at two hours long. Hmm. Um, so, but I did finish that finally. So that's cool. And then, uh, third, um, main thing that I was playing this week, uh, um, Jeff Solo, Jeff Solomon, Jerf Solo, Hacker Alias Jerf Solo. Uh, yeah. Jeff, he's been on the show before. Um, he heard me talking about how I wanted to check out Wargroup and he happened to have a code. So he uh, he gave me a, yeah he gave me a code to check it out on the PS4 um, and because I had I had heard from a lot of people how it feels very much like uh, Advance Wars which I oh, love right, Advance right. Wars love the Advance Wars games really wish Nintendo would bring out an Advance Wars on the Switch <laughs> um, yeah because it's been a long time since we've had an Advance Wars game mm. um, I really dig it uh, it does feel a lot like Advance Wars now I've heard as you get further into it it doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. feel that way as much anymore but i played a couple hours of it this week mm -hmm. um the combat is very much advanced wars where your unit is actually made like each one of your units are actually made up of multiple characters you, you basically have 10 hit points with every unit and you know the as those are reduced your attack power goes down because those count as a number of characters in that unit um except for your main characters who are just like super powerful and can roam around the battlefield taking out, you know, uh, dozens of other enemy characters, uh, dynasty warrior style. But the, uh, yeah, it's got a really great look. It's sort of got yes. a 16 bit style, hmm. you know, a little bit, little bit on the modern side of 16 bit style art. Um, so retro. Art. Bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, really dig the music um digging the story so far um yeah. and i i like the mission styles because like the first couple missions were very straightforward sort of tutorial slash attack missions but then um you get into this like uh you're trying to retreat and you have a bunch of citizens that you need to get off the map so 
um, much like Advance Wars, you have like a barracks that you can create units, and one of the units you can create is a, a wagon, and wagon works very much like a, an armored troop carrier from uh, Advance Wars, where it has a huge range, and you can load other units into it and move them around the map. So this whole this one battle that the last battle that I played was uh, civilians kept appearing on the map, and I had to move these uh, wagons around to load them in and get them to a retreat point. Mm. Try to get them all gone there. And as that's happening, um, the enemy uh, commander is getting closer and closer to the battlefield. Like he's sending troops, but he finally comes on the battlefield. And uh, so the whole thing is like, I need to get my civilians out and then get my main commander out because she can't fight him yet. She's not powerful enough. Um, and I, what, one of the things that I really love that happened is that as he gets closer, he he's evil. Huh? Um, and the weather changes anytime he's around, like the way, you know, he's showing up is that a thunderstorm starts, but the cool thing was, is that the thunderstorm actually had an effect on all of my, um, uh, distance attack units. So all my archers and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. their range really reduced in, in, in the, the, the heavy weather, uh, which I thought that was kind of a cool cool of things so um the other thing that i really like about it and i mentioned this on the show before that i was worried about is like i said with the fire emblem games uh, one of the things i love about the fire emblem games is that you can turn off permadeath if you want which is how i play or uh, of course uh, a former host ethan who loves fire emblem he plays with permadeath on because he would rather try to have like a perfect mission every time which is cool hmm. um but I've also said like with Fire Emblem that I've hit a, a, a roadblock on those games almost every time where I just like, this has gotten too hard. I'm not really having fun anymore. Yep. And I stop. Um, the, I really love in, in Wargroove the um, difficulty sliders. There's a bunch of different difficulty sliders, which I really, really like. So like you can make it so that you're super, your attacks are super powerful or really weak. You can make it so that the amount of cash that you earn is really high or really low, which affects how many units you can create in a battle. Um, because yep. it's all about, every battle is all about money. You want to have towns that you're creating cash flow and everything like that. And then of course you can, the other slider is I believe damage that you mm -hmm. take can either be really high or really low. So I've got them all adjusted down to the low side right now, but I found that it turned these, these first few missions into a complete cakewalk cakewalk. So I'm going to go back and start pumping those sliders up a little bit to see, uh, how it changed the game, but um, I really, really like it so far. And thank you so much to Jeff for for sending me a code uh, so I could check that out. And um, I'm excited to keep playing it. It's cool. it seems really quality so far. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're liking it. I'm I really like it as well. And Chucklefish, the publisher of the game, is mm -hmm. uh, has outlined like uh, the next patch. <clears throat> that they're mm -hmm. releasing so they're doing a checkpoint system they're overhauling the difficulty oh uh, checkpoint system be good yeah um they're changing some stuff with multiplayer where you can add cpu players to online games now or mm. coming in the patch oh cool interesting and by the way the the multiplayer in this is cross platform you can do right. that too, so except i'm not sure i don't think i can do it with ps4 so you have a ps4 code i don't think we could play together no uh, probably not unfortunately but it's like a play over email game it's like you do your turn it sends it to me oh, oh yeah really? it's like asynchronous yeah. right yeah oh. it's really really interesting unfortunately you, you got it for ps4 so we can't do it um and they're doing some uh, other other quality of life updates. So uh, that's, oh, CJ. that's that's good. I sorry. They're doing it some other <laughs> user experience updates. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that that I'm sure people will like. So uh, I'll link to that in the show notes uh, so people can check it out. Cool. cool. That's all I've been playing. Nice. All right. What's that? Did you say nice? I said nice. All right then. I think it's time for tweets. Cool. Let's do it. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me get this ready. There we oh, go. my God. Double. Double fill. Wow. That's mm. right. All right. Let's do this one from Mac Aurelius, Tayrell713, who says, so. Yeah, well, Travis strikes again, Crackdown 3, and now Anthem. The critical reception of these games has been antithetical to my own experience with them. What have been some games where the reviews just didn't match up with how you feel about them, positive or negative? 
I like the Musu games. So there you go. There's a whole <laughs> <laughs> pick one, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, yeah. it happens. It's happened a lot. Blue Dragon early on in the show, we used to talk about that. Yeah. Now yeah. I love Too that. human game. Too oh, human. Yeah. Another yeah. one where I love it, and it uh, got battered uh, in reviews. Yeah. Friday the Thirteenth. Obviously, I like that game. It has like under a sixty on Metacritic. Mm. Sea of Thieves is kind of in the same boat. Nah. So, <laughs> and you know how I feel about that game. <laughs> wow! Wow! Ooh. Ooh. My. Ooh. But you can uh, you should not feel bad about it really enjoying a game that does not uh, get a crazy good critical reception. No. And you know, and and we can all say, the the three of us being former professional mm-hmm. video game critics, yep. right? Spent a lot of years at school to become a professional video. That's critic. that's true. Those are all paid for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. mean, we all know. Right. That all you know, your NDA, right. your NDA is not expired. Oh, can I not, not allowed yeah. to talk about that? Can I yet? not talk about how how much no. money I took from game companies no. to give no. Game no. Oh no. boy. Never mind. <laughs> we'll fix that in post. <laughs> I'm of course you're joking. I'm joking. Uh, uh, At least about Ziff Davis. I'm... Yeah. Well, no, no, Can't no. Speak about anyone else. I mean, yeah. No. But seriously, who cares what? Well, here's. Say? I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Disparaging video game reviewers uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Clance, Clance, um, might not be a great thing to do. Obviously, uh, there are all sorts of ways that you can get opinions on games these days. And, you know, we've said it, I think we said it last episode. We've said it many times. Uh, you know, play the games that you're interested in playing. Like, you know, form your own opinions. Yes, use all sorts of sources to. Uh, make that buying decision, whether it's reviewers or streamers or let's plays or whatever. Like, uh, there's so many different ways to get to form an opinion on whether you should buy a game or not. That you know what, though, yeah. CJ, what? What? the most important source. <laughs> What's that? The most important source. And uh, if, if this this podcast, this if, podcast. If, you're, if you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, uh, just via audio i need to stop it right now i need to load up youtube load up okay. the archive of this show uh skip forward to this part uh so you can be watching it uh and i need you to press uh your your camera your screen uh, up to your chest okay because the most important part is right here right here inside you in your heart <laughs> in your okay? heart in your heart exactly exactly right i'm so there you yeah. go there's a there's my positive affirmation uh for video game fans for today for this week that's right don't worry about what other people say about a game just yeah, enjoy us. playing it unless it's us yeah then definitely yeah, i mean you're right then jeez obviously yeah yeah all right uh let's do this one from hacker alias video one if yeah. you could only choose one which of these games would you want Nintendo to announce next? Super Zelda Maker, Super Metroid Maker, or Super Ugh. Mega Man Maker? Ugh. Which, by the way, we should note, Mega Man is not a Nintendo-owned Nintendo game. Property. <laughs> I, I, That's I, the I, one I want Nintendo to announce just because of that. I would not want. I would not want Nintendo to announce that one because I would imagine Capcom would sue them and that would get canceled. That's right. You can't just you can't just go around announcing that you're developing a game. Now, to be fair, Nintendo has published Mega Man games in the past. That that is true, actually. Ooh, good point. Good point. That mm-hmm. is true. So clearly, they own uh, the. No, IP. I didn't say that, but they're just saying it's not outside the realm of possibility. <laughs> so what you're doing is you're starting a rumor. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no. Mega no, Man, if, it, if Mega we had Man the it, is coming to Switch. Yeah, that'd be cool. If oh, uh, if we had the option of a Zelda Maker, Metroid Maker, or Mega Man Maker, which would yeah. be your preferred one? I think I know Phil's answer. Well, you know what? Um, we already have a fantastic uh, Mega Man Maker in Mega Man Powered Up. But that's on PSP, right? Right. But I mean, it's still, it's a great, uh, it's a video game uh, editor. It's a fantastic little video game uh, editor. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yes. You know what? I'm going to say Zelda Maker. Yeah. I'm going to say Zelda Maker. I'm going to say Zelda Maker also. I I think it'd be fun to see people make Zelda 1 or Link to the Past style dungeons. Oh, yeah. Uh, Exactly. I'd be into that. I'd be way into that. For sure. I would rather all those time and resources go into making a new Zelda game proper. (laughs) I am not into the Mario Maker stuff. I'm not into Uh, any Maker uh, things. That's a shame. Sorry. That's a a real shame. Uh, Hacker Alias Beard the Movie says, So I'm playing Sonic CD for the first time. I don't get the love. The level design is terrible. What am I not seeing that everyone loves? It's terrible. It's not terrible. Not being snarky, just really curious. I'll tell you one of the things that I, I mean, you got to remember the context of this. Yeah. This came out at like, I would say the height of Sonic being, because this came out right around, this came out, I think, right after Sonic 2. Right. So yes. I mean, it was pretty, Sonic was pretty huge at that point. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah. very, very, very popular. So, I mean, kind of, we were eating up anything Sonic. Right. And and it was before Sega had dragged that character completely through the mud. Um, yeah. So there's that. So there, it goes back to sort of a nostalgia thing, right? Also, um, I think there's a lot of love for it because it was something that a lot of people didn't discover till much, much later because, let's face it, not a lot of people owned a Sega CD. And I don't think it was ever available in any kind of remake until the GameCube, right? Sonic Gems mm-hmm. Collection, I think, had Sonic CD on it. Yeah. So, I mean, there was that, too. And honestly, I go back and play it, and I think the level design definitely isn't as strong as, say, a Sonic 2. Absolutely for sure. not. Um, there's, right. there's no real arguing that. I agree um, with that. But I did really like what they tried with the time travel yes. aspect of it. it. It it's a different mechanic. It's not a mechanic they ever used again. And you mean debate whether it's whether it was the right way to go or not. But it was different. It made it feel like a completely different game, but still a Sonic game. I was never a fan of the time travel mechanic. Well, there you go. See, yeah. so I, I liked it. That seemed like. It seemed like kind of a half baked idea. Hmm. Uh, maybe. I mean, I I thought it was I, interesting that the future levels could completely change based on. Oh, I mean, that, it was know, like, it was it was a cute idea, right? But I don't think it was executed very well. That's fair. It might not have been the right system to execute that idea. That's on. also probably true. Yeah. Um, and then the right. other thing was, of course, and now I'm going to screw this name, or I'm I'm going to forget this name, but. I always thought it was interesting to see because it felt like because because after the first Sonic, of course, Yuji Naka left Sega mm-hmm. and then was courted back um, to, well, to, to come work in America to basically bring to start Sonic Team at Sega Technical Institute. Um, and that's where Sonic 2 happened and Sonic 3 happened as well. Um, Sonic CD was made by I forget which person person from the original Sonic team who stayed in Japan. Mm. No, uh, Noda, I think. Or anyway, so I always thought it was interesting to see like it almost felt like Sonic 2 and Sonic C D were were kind of a splinter of Sonic One. Like it was it was yeah the game going in two different the, the series going in two different directions. And yeah. to me it was always interesting to see how the non Naka take mm. worked. Right. Yeah. Now to Oshima, I think was his name. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, Oshima. So anyway, uh, that's that's me. And you know, love the music. Love the. I, I love the 3D bonus stages because bonus stages were always kind of an interesting thing in Sonic games, and the Sega CD ones are very cool. Um, they're using the system scaling a lot, and uh, um, I yeah, I loved a lot of things about that game. I love the whole idea of a level, a, a whole level being a race against a, a, a boss character mm-hmm. with uh was it mecha sonic i think in sega cd yeah as opposed to metal sonic and sonic 2 um yeah but totally understand people not get not liking it as well makes perfect sense it's it, mm-hmm. i feel like it's an acquired taste uh when it comes to the old 2d sonics there you go uh let's do this one from hacker alias a nutcracker who says hey guys Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is this a tweet from the Nutcracker? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. 
Okay. I have a quick cue. Uh, I don't get it. What is a good is a famous uh, Shakespeare play. Yeah. <laughs> what is a good <laughs> alternative to a frame meister? Something that can accept most consoles, oh. SNES, GameCube, era. SNES through GameCube era. Don't know. I, I don't really know what the question is. Is he asking like, how do I put old consoles onto an HDMI television? Because if that's the case, then there are several ways to. There are several converter boxes. I have one actually that's S Video, RCA, and uh, component to HDMI hmm. uh, box. It's not a frame meister, obviously. The quality is not going to be what you would get out of a frame meister because it's. A sort of different thing, but um, if you want just to be able to play those systems on your HDMI television, there are converter boxes that'll do it for under fifty bucks. Probably. Yeah, fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. 50 bucks. Well, isn't that nice? There it is. That's yeah. that's kind of the thing. Like the Frame Meister is definitely sort of the one of the high end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not the only thing that does it. It de- it depends what your needs are. If you want pixel like the- by pixel perfect. Right, uh, images. Then, yeah, uh, Frame Meister is going to be probably your best bet. Although, didn't they stop making them? They did, and that's kind of one of the reasons to find an alternative. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> stop making Frame Meisters. They did. Oh, I yes. didn't realize that. Yeah, um, but the one that I see a lot of the, you know, if you're looking for that level of quality, the one that I see a lot of um, the retro folks on YouTube talking about is the open source scan converter. I have uh-huh. no idea how much that costs. I'm assuming it's expensive. <clears throat> um, but then, you know, there's all, there's all kinds of uh, different options, too. Like, there's the, um, the, 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 what is it, Retro USB um, AVS for, for Nintendo and Famicom, which is just an HDMI, you know. Um, it's just, it takes, it takes NES and Famicom games. Well, that's an expensive one. Hmm. That's, that's not that expensive. expensive. It's less I expensive thought. than a Framemeister. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but there are um, there are definitely some. And there's like that that uh, HDMI converter thing you can buy to go into the back of your GameCube. That's like 200 bucks as well. So I mean, you really get what you pay for. But like what CJ said, if you really just want something quick and dirty to get onto your TV, it's not going to be pixel perfect, but it'll be playable and it'll look better than just plugging it in directly to the to a new TV. Yes. Yeah, there's lots of those boxes out there that you can get. Oh. I highly recommend, though, if it's something that you feel really um, passionate about, check out My Life in Gaming on YouTube. They have an RGB series, their RGB 101 series. I think they're up to 301 now. uh, That goes through like almost every system. They have some great uh, sort of breakdowns on the best boxes to use and that sort of thing. So highly recommend them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's do this one from Hacker Alias, Happy Kennard, who says, currently playing Sega Ages Fantasy Star and loving how the additional features and presentation make this game so much more accessible today. What other classic games, Sega or otherwise, would you like to see get the Ages treatment? The rest of the Fantasy Star series would be a great start. That's a very good answer. (laughs) Um, yeah, I, you know, I would say Final Fantasy, uh, and by the way, Final Fantasy nine, the version that just got released on switch, I bought that on the PlayStation four and it has some things like, uh, what fantasy star does with the experience doubler, but yep. instead I wish, I wish Final Fantasy IX had just an experience doubler or quadrupler or whatever. Instead, they have this thing that you can toggle on or off that the next hit your characters uh, connect with on an enemy takes out 9999 damage. Oh, so, so you can like, just end the fight with a hit, basically. You can just end wow. the fight with one hit, which is like, yeah. you know, thanks, but <laughs> <laughs> like you're taking away all skill entirely and the other option that they have is uh to turn off random encounters mm-hmm. entirely you just toggle yeah, them I don't off. like that it's like well but like you know like i game. don't i want something in between an all or nothing approach yeah. well, right you know, that's just for like, people who just want the story 
I don't know anyone who wants to just play Final Fantasy IX and oh. not actually do any of the battles oh. uh, themselves. Like that seems like a very boring way to play that. But I mean, I think the way that the Ages series has done it with the experience, uh, you know, stuff. That's yeah. the experience doubler. That's the way to to do those those games. Like, mm. and I wish that Square. It's not going to happen. Would patch <laughs> Final Fantasy IX to have that option instead of the just you know nine 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 hit mm. thing that yeah. they put in there um i wonder if that has to do with though because with that it's just a rom of the old game right right yeah because i think yeah. the m2 stuff <clears throat> are actually like rebuilt hmm. um i could be wrong yeah. about that but i think they rebuild the every, everything but i agree i mean it, that i think i'd love to see anything that makes Cl- any classic rpgs because that those are the games that really need it oh, that's right those right. are the ones that's... that took any amount of time right so we're talking like final right. fantasy 6 or any of the dragon quests or yeah uh or maybe fantasy like Star. i'd love to see like the original final fantasy 2 and 3 i mean it's been a while since they've done anything with those yeah um and like final fantasy 2 actually both of them and 5 as well but um 2 and 3 the japanese 2 and 3 not not what we got is 2 and 3 um really fascinating games because the systems in place in those games like in final fantasy 2 you don't have traditional experience points right your your characters um build up their abilities based entirely on what you do in battle so like if you use a lot of healing spells i don't know if it's just spells or healing spells then (laughs) that character's magic ability goes up right if you (coughs) excuse me if you take a lot of hits in battle um to take a lot of damage that character's uh um defense goes way up uh if you do a lot of damage in battle then that character's attack ability goes, like the entire game is built on what you do in battle which is fascinating but so difficult mm, to yeah. play right so it's like if you could take that i mean you can you can cheese it there are, there are great guides online where it's like you know spend the first three hours um, bringing your characters down to almost zero hit points because then they just become tanks. Um, huh. Like you can play it that way, but it kind of sucks to have to do that. But if they could take that and like re-release it, but make it more gentle, it would yeah. be great to experience. And then it's the same with Final Fantasy 3 mm-hmm. because that's where they introduced the job system that kind of uh, uh, informed the series from then on. Right, like yeah. that's where it came from, and there was a great remake of Final Fantasy three for the DS. Yep. Um, but then they never. I don't think they really did anything with it after that, which I would love no. to see come out on modern consoles. I thought my, they may have done something with it on mobile in Japan. I think yes, you're right. I think they've done something <laughs> uh, with all these. I think the mobile yeah. ones were actually re-release of the PSP versions that came out. Possibly, I could be wrong. Could be yeah. wrong. But anyway, I, yeah, I'd love to see any sort of classic RPGs, Dragon Warrior, same thing, like yep. anything that would allow me to experience them. I hate the idea of turning off random encounters because I feel like no, you're yeah, really killing too. the meat of the game at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, to make any of those games more accessible by modern standards or let you play them how they were meant to be played on sure. current systems, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Here's one. A version of Ninja Gaiden where yeah. getting hit doesn't make you bounce backwards yeah. like five feet. Really? <laughs> that would change the game. <laughs> right? That would change. You'd just blow through it at that point. <laughs> you know what else would be great for, for original Ninja Gaiden? What's that? Uh, do something like they did with Sonic remakes where they added the spin dash to the original Sonic, even though it mm. didn't exist. Add the wall climb. Like just oh, the standard yeah, yeah. up or down wall climb to the original Ninja nice. Gaiden. It yeah. would make it very playable. That's true. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's finish it up with this one. We actually have two two tweets that are pretty similar here. Uh, and I'll maybe I'll read them both. Oh, hey, hold on. Breaking news. Don't say it if you're not going to do it. Breaking news. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Into the Spider-Verse won Best Animated Picture. As rightly As it should have. Well it should. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's outstanding. Uh, All right, let's read both of these. This one from Hacker Alias Innuendo20XX, who says, after years of searching, 
I finally found a game that my wife is looking forward to playing. Captain Toad with the new co-op update. Did you guys play a game together with your loved one that she genuinely enjoyed playing? No, so I divorced her. (laughs) (laughs) And that's our show for this week. Thanks for... I think I think Wii Sports. I played Wii Sports with with uh, and I mean, we still play Wii Sports bowling occasionally uh, yeah. with my wife, and she genuinely enjoys it. Um, and then she enjoys watching me play games like the the Saboteur oh, was one that she really enjoyed watching <laughs> me play. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I haven't really Dana and I don't really play like you know co-op or competitive games together really you know like there will there will certainly no? be some games where i will sit down and play and she'll Smash watch brothers <laughs> yeah she 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 uh mains uh inkling girl what's a smash smash brothers character quick inkling girl inkling girl sure <laughs> all right uh no no i mean we don't no, really, really no like you know she'll you don't play. really you don't really play multiplayer games well, you don't no. like to play play with I, others. I, I don't. No. I don't. Like I'll I'll play through a game and she'll watch me play it. Certainly, you know, like when I when I played through like Last of Us or something, she would sit and watch me play Last of Us or yeah, or or you know Metal Gears or whatever. But uh, yeah, we don't uh, you know sit down and, and play games together too often. Yeah. So, all right, and then there's this tweet from Hacker Alias Pope Mitsugi who says. I'm looking for a great co-op game to play with my girlfriend over the PSN on PS4. Do you have any suggestions on great games that fit this bill? They sort of seem hard to come by. What about Toe Jam and Earl? Is that on PS4 co-op? Toe Jam and Earl comes out on PS4 March 1st. Recommended. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see. Overcooked? That's out on PlayStation. That's not co-op. I mean, it's kind of yeah. That feels like a relationship killer. Okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek Bridge Crew done. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, like co-op games, especially. It depends on if she's a gamer or not, right? I mean, like, doesn't that it would I? I guess he's asking about games to play. Does not... I guess I, I, I'm going to say overcooked. Play that. CJ's doubling down and overcooked. Yeah, I'm doubling down. <laughs> sure. Okay. You got nothing. Nobody. No, else I, I nothing. already. I already said Toe Jam and Earl. What do you want? Okay. Toe, Toe Jam and Earl is a great, yeah. uh, <laughs> great option. Also, any of the uh, arcade archives games that are out on uh, PS4, which are a lot of them. Uh, those can be played two player. Super Baseball 2020. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love Super Baseball 2020. Such a good game. Uh, All right. I think that's where we're going to stop for the evening. Right? Twiddly no. Tweet. No. All righty. And that is our show for this week. Thank you very much for listening. If you have a question for us or would like to comment on something that you heard, you can direct that to at P1 Podcast on the Twitter, or you can go to our internet website at player1podcast.com. There you'll find our contact information. You'll find links to Generation 16 episodes from Mr. Greg Stewart. Yes, the rough cut's almost done for the latest episode. Excellent. Very excited. I created a new lower third uh, this week, which doesn't sound exciting, but if you edit videos, uh, you'll realize okay. it's really stand exciting. Stand up, let's see it. What? Your lower third? No, that's come not on. <laughs> Your lower third? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm no, to see what's no. in store. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. You will also find show notes and links to all the things that we talked about uh, in this episode, and you'll mm-hmm. find a link to our Discord server where you can discuss this episode with us and our other listeners. If you'd like to subscribe to the Player One Podcast, you can just by visiting playeronepodcast.com or by going to uh, the, the Apple Podcast application. You can also head over to the App Store and invest $1.99. Cheap. Pick up the Player One Podcast iPhone application, which gives you one 
touch communication with our lower thirds hmm? through, uh, through, I don't know, man. I don't Let's know. Just go with it. Just go with Twitter's, it. The Twitters, the emails, what have you. You also have all of our episodes ready to stream right to your listening device. And hey, Android cell phone, telephone users, the Play One podcast, iPhone applications, that same. Dollar ninety nine. Also cheap. So we're there at the Amazon Android Marketplace for us on Stitcher Radio or on Spotify. You can like us on Facebook. You can check out archives of our show or watch us live, live, live most weeks on the YouTubes.com slash P1 podcast. And if you'd like what you've heard and how could you, you can head over to patreon.com slash P1 podcast through a few shekels our way. CJ, did you ever get around to seeing that Spider-Verse movie? No. Your Patreon dollars will allow <laughs> CJ to purchase Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse digitally, I believe this week. I think you're right. Yeah, on, it is. On this digital week. services. Yeah. Uh, you need to see that, CJ. I misappropriate yep. right those on. funds, man. I give with, you permission to this time. Okay, with your permission. Wait, right. what? Universe is just that good. <laughs> All right. Just that good to steal from your friends and from mm -hmm. uh, your hardworking uh, fans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Spider Verse is very, very good. Just saying. Okay. Hey, anyway, well, you, you, of course you have. Yeah. Oscar winning, CJ. I, yeah. Academy Award winner. It's Academy. right up there with the Sexy Fish movie. <laughs> Which I also haven't seen. You haven't seen Incredible Mr. Lippet? Well, I've seen that one. I mean, that's <laughs> a, that a Sexy Fish. <laughs> that's right. You know. Uh, hey, What's if you that Don Knotts impression? I'm a fish. Uh, no, that's not uh, done. Not uh, the one you were doing. I'm a, uh, I'm a Mr. Furley, uh, no. Jack, no. and uh, Terry. I'm very disappointed. And Chrissy and Janet says uh, you make a uh, three is a crowd of my in my company. No, like that. No, and, Andy, Andy. I believe Opie is a uh, causing trouble in school. <laughs> <laughs> and made CJ fall over with that one. <laughs> oh, I'm a fish. Yeah. There you go. I Thank gotta you. fight the Nazis. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm falling in love with a fishy lady. You <laughs> know, I have a, a human girl up on land. Mr. Limp, it's a weird movie. <laughs> 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 if you have a couple bucks left over, head over to generation-16.com where you'll find Greg Seward's Mr. Limpet slash Shape of Water fan fiction. <laughs> Warning, it gets a little spicy. We'll leave the kids at home when you go to that website. I can't argue with any of that. Exactly. Uh, you'll find the Patreon link to help support uh, his outstanding web series about North America's favorite second banana. The Sega Genesis. Thanks, Bill. No problem. It's CJ. Really... Yes. Thank you for showing up. Well, thank you, Phil. And I see in the chat we forgot to say Animal Crossing for the game you should play with a loved one. Okay. I didn't anyway. forget. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gregory? Yo. Thank you for showing up. Uh, No problem. My pleasure. Okay. Landy? Aunt B? <laughs> Opie? Yeah? Congratulations on Solo! Glad <laughs> you got that one out the door, Opie! This is Ron. This is, this is a kid who played Sam. Opie. Yeah. 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 Is now a director. Did you ever see, uh, did you ever see uh, Ron Howard's brother, Clint? Uh, how can you not? Yeah, he's in yeah. everything, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a he's a unique looking individual. True. Yeah. And thanks to everyone listening out there. We'll be back next week. Sure. TBD. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Toodaloo.